Mi, 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 mi. And you thought something was wrong with your volume. I've been, I've been thinking about playing that gag for ages, man. Oh, let's see. Uh, my name is Clint. This is Clint's vlog from the bar. I got a few things to talk about. I'm going to keep this as short as humanly possible. You know, I ramble on and on. I got some notes here to help me out, so let's stay focused, okay? And I don't, you can always stop this if you're like, oh, okay, I am so done with this guy. He is annoying me, okay? Because I listen to it and it annoys myself. But hey, give me a chance, baby. I'm here to entertain. See, like I said, annoying. Anyway, I'm going to do the weekend wrap up. Um, first off, uh, Friday, early show, we had Radar versus Wolf. No Good Deed, Liberty Hall Collective, and The Instance, or Instance No The. You know what, to be honest with you, I don't really remember much about the show because it was really busy and it was just me behind the bar and that happens. Sometimes I'm like, what can I get you to drink? And all of a sudden I look and the fluorescents go on and I don't know what the hell happened. It's one of those shows, but let me tell you something. The guys brought the crowd. It was awesome. Good show, good vibe. People seem to have some fun, so... Check out those bands if, if you get a chance. I know on my day off that if I hear these guys are playing, I'm going to go, probably not. <laughs> probably not. But you never know. You never know. Uh, you know, the, the uh, Friday early show got canceled. I was really, uh, really bummed out about that, not only because I didn't make any money, uh, but uh, they were uh, super sweet guys, really, real sweethearts. So I want to give them a shout out anyway. They came all the way from Omaha. Uh, they were rappers. Name was uh, Francis East, Danny Chi, I think it's pronounced. Uh, Gadima, my man Gadima. Chris Dutson. Uh, so, yeah, they're from Omaha. Super sweet guys. Actually, they started performing. They <laughs> performed for like 10 minutes. Uh, but I was actually enjoying it. I was, and they shut it down, which I enjoyed even more. No offense. But uh, early show, uh, early out is always a good thing. But Check them out if you're in Omaha, if they come back. They're really good guys, and they seem to be pretty talented. Uh, and actually, I went down to uh, the lift down the street. Uh, that's another bar that I work with. It's basically a martini bar. So I went uh, behind the bar, and I was like, hey, does anybody want to leave early? And it was an art show. The new artist down there is, named, uh, is her name's Liz DeClean. I call her Lynn, actually, because I messed up the first time, and then it just kept on going. So Lynn, Liz DeClean. Uh, every, uh, every month now, we have a new show, a new art show, and she's up right now, and, and they had an art opening, and it's always big time. People come out. It's a lot of fun. So I went over there, and I worked that. And, uh, you know, one story that stuck out for the night, I was, I was, it was really busy. It was insane. And this was about probably 11, 30, 12. You bartend, you do the dishes, then you go out, you got to collect all the, the empty glasses, and, you know, it's a, it's a rotation. You got to keep it going. So I went out there, I was cleaning glasses, and I'm always really careful about this. I, you know, there will be a martini glass, and there could be that much left. And the first time I did it, I grabbed somebody's uh, martini glass, and, she, and they always make it, they always freak out. They're like, yeah, no, 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 I'm not done. And I'm like, Okay, I mean, there's there's literally like a sip left, but hey, it's your drink, uh, your drink. I don't want to take it from you, but anyway, this this story took it to another level. This guy, I go up to him. They're sitting on the couches. He has slicked back hair, glasses. You know, thinks he's real cool, and so there's a bunch of glasses in front of him on the on the table. And so there's one in front of him, and it's a rocks glass. And I swear to you, visualize this. I mean, there is two drops left. Like, you can see, you look down, and you can see. I mean, it's almost clear. Okay, there is nothing in there. So I go to pick it up. Uh, okay, there's a mistake, and the guy flips out, and he's like, bartender, bartender, I am not done with that bartender. He kept on saying bartender, and the way he said it really pissed me off. And so I was like, hey, dude, cool it, man. Okay, you just have to say nice. I'm not going to take your your drops of scotch or whatever you got, you know, this guy just pissed me off. And it just, 
you know, one interaction like that can just bring you down. And so I, I try to fight against it. You can't, can't keep these, make this, uh, let these people bother you, you know. So I just was trying to be zen about it, and I'm just like pushing through, Clint, push through, push through, forget about this guy. But, yeah, that's, you always remember the bad stories and not the good stories. But anyway, check out the lift uh, down the street on 4th Street. Uh, Liz has a show now. It's really good. Okay, so that was Friday night. Saturday, um, early show. Here's a funny story. Uh, there's a, a friend of mine's band. is actually called The Host Country. It's uh, Ty and uh, Diana Garls. And they come and they play every once in a while, probably three, every three or four months. And uh, I always look forward to hearing them. Uh, they Actually, Logan, Logan, give you a shout out. He produced their, their CD, and it's really good. But uh, I see on the website, I always check the website before I have to work, and I check the website, and it says, the host company is playing. And I'm like, the host company? So I text, the, text my uh, booker, Lad Aslan, and I'm like, is it? What's the host country? Is that a? I mean, who is? Is that the host country? Is it a mistake? He texts back, no, no, there. That's it's it's the host company. So I'm like, okay, there's two bands called the host co host company and the host country. Okay, so who knows? There's always names out there. So anyway, I get in. Oh, and so I, I was jokingly, uh, I was like, we got to get a show with the host country, the host company, Wolves in the Attic. And uh, Wrestling with Wolves, those are two other bands that play. And he texted him back, uh, that sounds like a terrible idea. Or awful, he used the word awful. So anyway, not that those are bands are awful, but you gotta, you know, you gotta make it happen. Right, Chad Taylor? Right? So uh, anyway, I get here, sitting down, reading a book, and this guy Ty comes in, he's like, hey man, I'm like, that's really random. What's going on? Are you playing tonight? He goes, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so it's not the host company. It's the host country that's playing. He's, he didn't know what, he, what I was talking about. So, yeah, they screwed up the name. The, the headliner screwed up the name. So I'm going to probably start calling them the host company. Uh, let's see. So who played that show? Gilby Elliot Klimowski with TJ. And I got to say, I'm not going to say any names, but there was a guy up on stage, guitarist, electric guitar, and uh, this guy did, uh, what is it called? Now I'm blanking. Uh, it's uh, called a ca cajon. C-A-J-O-N-E. It reminds me of cajones, like balls. You got some, you got some big cajones. You know what I'm saying? That's about all my, my uh, Spanish I know. But uh, the guy had an electric guitar and uh, was playing a... Uh, a cajon, it's like a box, a drum box, like a percussive instrument. But it, you hit it just right, and it sounds like a snare hit. It's really, and you got the, you got the kick drum. It's a boo, -ch, a boo, -ba boo, -ch. Unfortunately, it was playing like the same beat every song. But anyway, the thing that bothered me, I was back here, and it was slow at the time, but uh, it got insane after a while. I think this was the show. Yeah, Saturday. Is that the show? Yeah, Saturday early. Yeah, it was dead. It was like an hour after doors, and I'm just like kicking back, just like, oh man, it's gonna be one of those one of those nights. So I look, so I got time to watch, and he's got he's got a, a music stand in front of him, the sheet music, or I don't know, maybe his lyrics are on there, and he's every song he's flipping through, and I'm like, dude, come on, man, learn your lyrics, learn your music, okay? There's only two forms of music that it is allowed that you can have sheet music. That's jazz and classical. Other than that, you get up there with an electric guitar, forget about it, man. Leave that at home, learn your lyrics, sorry. All right, so, oh, and then, like hour and a half, I'm just, you know, squeezing my butt cheeks, okay? <laughs> I don't, I'm doing nothing over here. And all of a sudden, I look over the door, and literally 40 people come in. I mean, this group of people. I'm like, is it a party bus that's coming in here? So anyway, so I'm going from zero to 60 in about one minute. No, 20 seconds. So they all come back in a bunch. So everybody needs drinks. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, once I get through this rush, it's going to be cool. All of a sudden, people start streaming in, streaming in, streaming in. And I'm like, oh, oh, my God. Okay, I can handle this. I can handle this. I'm, you know. Ten minutes before, I'm like, this is sucking. 
So anyway, uh, all of a sudden there's 90 people in the bar and it's just me and I'm just, I'm like uh, sweating, I'm running, running everywhere and everybody was drinking Bush Light and Bud, and Bud Light, which is easy, you know. And anyway, I think it was like a high school, I was talking to the, uh, the guy from the headliner, I was like, are these your friends? And he's like, yeah, we got one guy out of town that came in, we we're just like, screw it, let's have a show and, and these are all like our high school and college friends. I think it's Valley High School. I always know that it's Valley High School in West Des Moines because they always bring the hottest chicks. I mean, it was wall-to-wall hottie. My wife is not going to hear this because she doesn't listen to this stupid blog. So I can talk. There was this chick. I mean, I swear to God, she was wearing this black shirt. And it was like starting right here to all the way down to a V down to her belly button. I, I'm see- And then no shirt underneath. And I'm trying not to look, okay? But you know you wear something like that, girls. I know you want us to look, okay? I'm trying to, trying to look her in the eye, like take her order, but she might look off for a second, and I'll just look down and check them out. You know, I mean, and she's doing the lean in. I got a story about that, but uh, come on. Uh, every once in a while, I wrote a story about this. This isn't for my followers, you know. Sometimes I like to just go, they come up to the bar with their big, you know, with their cleavage hanging out, and I'm just like, listen, I, I just got to get this over with right now. And she's like, what, what's that? And I'm like, <laughs> just, just stare at her tits, you know, <laughs> just get, and I swear to God, this has happened five times I've done it and they all love it. They usually push it even closer. So ladies, I know I got your number here with the cleavage. Okay. And it's fine. I'm fine with it. I, I it's, I'm okay with it, but you know, I, I'm going to look every once in a while. Sorry. So anyway, so that was it. That was a high school reunion. That was crazy. That was Saturday early. Uh, Bar did really good, and I did pretty good myself. So Saturday night, that was an interesting show. Only two bands played. They were like uh, jam bands. First off, we had Aquamarine Dream Machine. Uh, They're kind of on the hippie tip. They played for about an hour and a half. They're really good. They're always good, and they had the crowd. They had the crowd into it. And they brought a great crowd. There was probably, probably 60 people that showed up for it. The uh, headliner, they were called White Wolf T-Shirts. White Wolf T-Shirt, T-Shirts, one of the two. And they were fun. They actually had wolf masks on. They all had, had masks on. And they were super cool guys. I had a couple conversations with them. And uh, their music was really good. Real jammy, but more on the, on the dance tip. So uh, I really liked them a lot. Check them out when they're, when they're out and about. I think they said they were from Cali. I'm not sure. And oh, during during the course of the night, two things. And then I'm gonna wrap this up because I don't know where I'm at right now. But uh, ran out of fives. I had like ten in fives, and we had uh, we had already exhausted. Next door, the Royal Mile gave us a hundred. We went through that. And then we went down the street to the lift to get get a hundred and fives. We went through that. I mean, it was a crazy night. So I'm down a, a five. So I, I tell my fellow bartender, I'm like, I'm gonna go track down some some fives. So I grab, I grab $100. I go across the street to this place called the Copper Cup. Now, I've heard things about that place, whatever, but I went in, and it's actually pretty nice. It's a pimp little spot. It's all new. That's, you know, this, that's, it's actually it's a breath of fresh air uh, to this place because this place is an, a dump, okay? Go in our bathroom for a second, and you'll see what I mean. And this place was, like, all new, new bar. They had the Copper Cups on it for the Moscow Mules along the wall. And the bartenders were pretty freaking hot, too. I mean, look at me, look at this face, and then go over to the Copper Cup and check out those girls, okay? They're pretty hot. Like I said, my wife doesn't watch these, so I can say whatever the hell I want. But my son says it, listens, but he's cool. So I went, went, I went down there, and I said, look, I, do you have any fives I can, I can switch out? And she was super nice. She got me, and she was like, we can only do $40. And I was like, that's fine, whatever, I appreciate it. So they were really cool, the Copper Cup, check them out, come to a show, go across the street. It's not for everyone, but actually it's pretty cool. I texted my boss, I said, dude, you got to go over to the Copper Cup. There's hotties galore there. And he texted me back, uh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, mix things up, man, try new things, but he won't have it. So, and then I went over to Dos Rios. It's a, a, a Mexican restaurant. It's a high, high-end Mexican restaurant on Court Avenue. Went in there. They had a nice little crowd along the bar, and I, there was um, two bartenders, and I called one of the bartenders over, two guys. 
And I was like, dude, can you help me out? And he was like, absolutely sure. Come over anytime when you need some change. And I was like, God, these, I, I got to meet our neighbors. And you know, the, the, and when, when things seem to be just like, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do out of control, it's like sometimes those things lead to meeting new people. So I thought that was pretty cool. The Copper Cup and Dos Rios, check them out. Go to Dos Rios for dinner, come over here for a show, then go have a drink and see some hotties uh, bartending uh, over at the Copper Cup. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you. There was this guy at the Late Show. <laughs> He'd come up to me every 20 minutes. He's like, Clint, can I tell you a joke? And I was like really busy and I'm like, dude, not right now, in between the bands, come up, I want, I'll give you my full, full attention, undivided attention, you can tell me a joke. And so he goes, okay, okay. And every 15 minutes he comes by, can I tell you a joke now? I don't, the guy was obsessed with wanting to tell me a joke. I don't know. But he did, and he didn't even know who I was. He didn't even know that I was this famous vlogger, okay? <laughs> because he kept on asking me, he's like, in between, oh, can I tell you a joke? He said, what's your name again? I'm like, Clint, Clint, Clint. So anyway, his name was Mark. I remember his Mark, really long hair. And so, uh, so he was telling me he was telling me some jokes during the course of the night, and they were all pretty dirty. And I'm uh, I'm gonna keep it cool here, but I said, "Hey, dude!" At the end, I was like, "You gotta give me a, a joke for my for my son, so I can go home and tell him a joke." Because I'm not a big joke guy. I've never known jokes. So he goes, "Okay," and he goes, "Why did Piglet look in the toilet?" And I go, "I don't know. Why did Piglet look in the toilet?" And he says, "Because he was looking." Or poo. That's it for today. Another Clint's vlog from the bar. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, next time, I don't know when I'm going to do one of these. Uh, this guy came up to me. He's like, I love your vlog. And I was like, I guess I got to do another vlog. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you checking me out. Check out my blog at fromthebar.me if you're, if you're seeing this on YouTube. Uh, and that's it. I, I really got to wrap things up. I got to go home. I got some Netflix to watch. I'm going to make myself some snacks. It's going to be great. Get a little Cadbury egg, you know, get in the, get in the, the feel for uh, Easter. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to take, we, we just installed an escalator. So I'm going to take that down. I, I got to uh, take down some cans. So I'm going to take down the escalator, but uh, I'll see you next time. I'll see you from the bar and take it easy, baby. <clears throat> See ya.